thank you sham for the kind words and uh, uh, this august gathering and uh, respected uh, jay prakash sir who honored this session <coughs> once upon a time inspection percussion palpation auscultation used to be the traditional way by which the clinical medicine was taught when they discovered the writing script pluto said if you write you stop thinking so writing should be ideally banned because it stops the human thinking did we stop no later calculator was discovered people said if calculator is there we forget the multiplication tables did did it happen no later the excel sheets have come and they said that excel sheets will make the calculators redundant and the human mathematical computation redundant did it no so when we were the undergraduate students lub dub drrr is the mid diastolic murmur zzz 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 is the pan systolic murmur lub <sighs> like a respiratory sound is the early diastolic murmur if anything is missed professor used to say i don't like your face get out and fail us in exam but the 2d eco today kill the stethoscope we are wearing stethoscope more like a ornament right so there is nothing more constant in the human life than the change so we are embracing that change today there are 90000 medical students who are passing out of the medical schools every year we are producing like a chinese factory the students are in such a state is wolf parkinsonism and parkinson are the same park or a different park that is the kind of confusion they are one student was asked to write a short note on ranula so he started ranula is a special cannula <laughs> so the times have changed and uh, we all used to carry davidson harrison everything in our elbow pits like a preterm baby carried nowadays students hey prof what's the matter what's the matter with you saturday you are taking class man are you having any problem bro they are asking if you say tell me the glasgow coma scale oh it's okay they are opening google and saying this is the glasgow coma scale no big deal to remember what are the components of the glasgow coma scale so how do we train people massively to develop empathy towards the suffering human suffering of the patient probably the need of medical college today is not to teach the science but a kind of empathy towards the patient to deal him more like a human being rather than anything else rather than any package right so at idea clinics we are very much into that disruption to make use of technology to completely revolutionize the way the home healthcare is delivered by the doctors who are nearby the home of the patients unfortunately today going to police station or receiving a summons from the court of law and attending a trial and coming to the hospital have become synonymous so no one want to get admitted right so whereas in the contrast there are thousands of mbbs doctors sitting and preparing for the useless pg entrance which really does not test anything but a routine learning of few facts to become the topper i had a privilege of uh, coaching almost 2 lakh medical students for the pg medical entrance
So we want at Idea Clinics these MBBS doctors whose resource is unutilized to become the grandchildren of the old man who had a fracture, who cannot be mobilized, of an elderly woman who has an osteoporosis in the home, who don't like to go, go to hospital. A grandchild like adjacent MBBS doctor can go to the patient's home and uh, be able to manage. But who will train these, the so-called grandchildren who are confused about ranula and cannula. So there should be some way, right? So chat GPT has revolutionized the natural language processing. So what is chat GPT? Whenever we speak, we use a language. Whenever we use the language, there is an intent in that language. So suppose if somebody said, I have headache, vomiting, diarrhea, there's a language in that, right? So it understands the language. It will offer the associated symptoms with that presenting symptom. And once that is being chosen by the patient, it automatically creates the five most possible differential diagnosis. And what is the treatment plan? What is the clinical pathway? What is the follow-up, et cetera, et cetera, is all being generated today by the artificial intelligence. But how artificial intelligence and machine learning know that? If you take in India, there are 4.5 billion consultations occur every year for a 1.3 billion population. That means 3x times the population will be the number of consultations required by the general physician. So if you take Hyderabad, we have 1 crore population. How many consultations needed? 3 crore, three crore consultations per year. That means per day, how many consultations are needed? 3 crore divided by 365 days is about 1 lakh consultation should happen every day. But 1 lakh OPD walk-ins can people do? Can they go to the prison or a jail to get evaluated? That's only possible if the Muhammad moves to the mountain rather than the mountain moving to the Muhammad, where the nearby MBBS doctor can be able to go identify what is a possible cause of the fever, etc., and be able to manage the patients at the home. So that is where Idea Clinics has created a disruptive model empowered by the chat GPT in the back end. So this is how a patient's console looks like. It will say, create a clinical case in which language you want to, in English, click. Can you tell some health problem that we commonly see? Can anybody volunteer? Just tell what a patient's complaint. Some complaint. Headache. headache. So he said that, hey, I have headache. I have body pains. Body pain. I have fever. Even in Telugu, they can be able to type it. So it says submit. Then it will ask some basic questions like, what is your name? You entered some name? Yeah. Sita, Gita, Pere, Edaina. So Sita, what is your age, 40? Then uh, there are few basic questions. Uh, in which city, let's say Hyderabad, you said how long ago are you fine? It, you said 10 days. Then you said which services are you looking? Home health care, video consultation, visit clinic, visit hospital. I said home health care. Then what is your weight, 40 kgs or 60 kgs, whatever. Then uh, what is your height? So why we are asking these silly questions is, once that initial presenting complaint is presented to the chat GPT in the back end, it takes about 12 seconds time to create the clinical case summary and uh, approach to the patient. So now the chat GPT has given what are the possible associated symptoms with that initial presenting symptom. These are dynamically generated by the chat GPT. Do you have fatigue? Do you have chills, sweating, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or sore throat or runny nose? Let us say the patient has chosen, the patient has chosen, please choose four or five, like cough, very good. Sensitivity to light, sensitivity to light, yeah. Giddiness, so whatever that he is having, this also will come in Telugu, Hindi, local vernacular for the patients. Now you say submit. 
it will say your clinical history is noted. Within a short period of time, our doctor is going to uh, come to your home and be able to manage. But where is our doctor? Doctor is in the next lane, MBBS doctor. Thinking Parkinsonism, Wolf Parkinsonism, are they one and same or not? For that doctor, earlier we used to go and ask assistant professor, how shall we approach this given clinical case? We used to go to Harrison's internal medicine textbook. We used to read approach to the headache, approach to the fever, etc. Now there is no need. The chat GBD, yes. Once you click on view the clinical summary, the chat GBD prepared the clinical summary. Sita is 40 year old, typically developed what are the positive symptoms, what are the negative symptoms that Sita has developed. Now, let's see the doctor's side. So the doctor has the app. Patient has a web and the doctor has an app. So in this, can you go to my consults? So in the my consults, it is the home healthcare where the Sita's case of headache, body pains and fever is visible. And on the side, the Sita's phone is also there for the doctor nearby. Now he clicked, he has the case summary. Can you go down? A little more? Yeah. Now he is having the investigations, what need to be done on the Sita to approach. Then can you go down a little bit? You are also, the MBBS doctor is also having, what is the treatment plan for this patient when he meets the patient beforehand? It's like a, a legal attorney preparing for a case before he is going before to the judge. In this case, the judge is the patient. Then you have come down what should be the follow-up questions? What is the clinical pathway? How we should approach stepwise to this particular patient, Sita, who has a body aches, fever, along with the associated symptoms. So this way, you don't need to be even MBBS doctor. Ultimately, with 30 medicines that we frequently write, I'm wondering, so, do we need to study so many years, right? To write 30 medicines, order a few investigations. Nowadays, no percussion, no palpation, no auscultation, no early diastolic murmur really need to be used. Half of the nurses don't know which direction to put stethoscope also. When the ear canals are forward directed, they put the stethoscope in the backward direction, right? So. The future of the healthcare, as the idea clinics has, at idea clinics we built, is all about empowering with the artificial intelligence, the doctors to become more useful doctors. The only thing that artificial intelligence cannot teach is how to embrace the patient, give you a shoulder for her to cry when she is in pain. That is the thing that a human need to have and the knowledge we can leave it to the artificial intelligence to prepare a note about how to manage the patient. So thank you so much for a patient listening. I mean, uh, I hope uh, at least this stimulates some of you people to ask uh, any questions. Uh, for a Change, I'll ask a question. I mean, how does, uh, because m most of my patients who come to me generally are psychosomatic. They exaggerate the symptoms. They sometimes, they downplay the symptoms. How can this app recognize that? Now, because most of the people, they either exaggerate or they downplay the symptoms. Yeah. So if you ask, uh, they'll tell all the symptoms. They'll pick up all the things. So many patients, nearly at least 30% of Patients of mine are somatic disorders. So how can this ha app recognize those people? It's a good question. Like leading questions are often asked in the cross-examination, but not um, in the defense, right? Uh, whenever we, there is a trial. When you tell the patient that probably you do have photosensitivity, fatigue, everything, patient may feel that he has all that. That is, that is obvious, there is no doubt on that. But the point is, 
this list of associated symptoms that it has suggested is the array of the possibilities. A genuine patient will report what he really bothering him and we can restrict it by saying maximum a presenting symptom can be associated with two or three associated symptoms. So we can restrict them to select two or three most bothering so that we can decrease the number of leading and once that is being done, remaining is all the taken care by the AI and of course above all the doctor uses his own clinical skill and intuition. We don't say that it replaces but it is uh, a ruddy recorder for a doctor um, who is confused between Parkinsonism and Wolf Parkinson. If, uh, anybody has any more questions? symptom disappear? Yes, yes. You, you can uncollect, select, everything before this button. Kukul is saying, now Kukul is saying. And the legality? <laughs> Modli, the legality, I mean, <laughs> legal issues. Suppose you diagnose something on, depending upon AI-based uh, thing, what will be the legal implications? What is that? Legal implications. Legal. Legal, legal implications. Legal, yeah. It's a very good question. Pluto was also saying that it is illegal to discover writing, right? It is, see, the point is all the clinical decision support system is like a textbook. It's no wrong in looking into textbook. Ultimately, the doctor is licensed to kill once he is MBBS, right? So only we are asking, don't kill illogically, but kill logically because mortality is Without our contribution, nobody will die, right? So that is the reason, uh, absolutely legal. Legal in the sense that this is like uh, assistant professor, associate professor telling on phone to the resident, hey man, this guy is having a proximal muscle weakness and difficulty while squatting. That's the reason more likely this is myopathy rather than neuropathy. The way we tell to a resident, here there is a virtual teacher who is uh, helping the doctor to get the guidance. And of course, the best clinicians, unfortunately, are outside medical colleges. And uh, there is a very famous dictum. If you know the, if you, if you can practice, do practice. If you can't, go and teach in the medical college. That has become the unfortunate aphorism in the modern time. So that is the reason we graduated from great teachers like Professor Shantaram sir, who used to hold our hand, make us feel pericardial friction rub, make our ulnar border to feel the S3 and S4. Such kind of things are missing. And it is impossible with about uh, 900 medical colleges left and right coming up in every hamlet the best teacher today is the patient who tells Buchava, Sitaka, who tell about their story, about the palpitations they have and the atrial fibrillation they have, right? So that's the point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, all the organizers and the idea clinic people. Thank you, Shyam, especially mine.